Is time travel possible? It's a question that has interested philosophers and physicists for many centuries. While the question remains unsolved, the reality is that you can visit many places on Earth and travel back in time. You see, there are places in India today without paved roads, sewage, running water, electricity, phone service, basically all of the luxuries you can expect of the developed world. You use the bathroom outside, you chase your chicken for lunch, and you collect your water from the nearby stream. You may not consider yourself a very wealthy person, but one trip to the remote villages of India where hundreds of millions of people live will put everything into perspective. We all think we know the difference between wealth and poverty, but let's remind ourselves of the definition. Poverty is the state of not having enough material possessions or income for a person's basic needs. This means not having enough food, water, clothing, shelter, or medicine to live a decent life. Now, poverty is everywhere, even here in America, but poverty in America is different from poverty in India. Let's make sense of this by looking at the poverty line. The poverty line in America, give or take, is about $35 per day. The poverty line in India can be as low as 40 cents per day. 40 cents. Right now in India, there are at least 200 million Muslims. That is a population greater than Turkey, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, Yemen, Bahrain, Qatar, Kuwait, Oman, Lebanon, and the UAE combined. Out of that 200 million Muslims in India, 31% live below the poverty line, or in other words, 62 million people. That is the entire population of Florida and California combined. India is a bittersweet contradiction. On the one hand, it is rife with poverty, death, starvation, and disease. On the other, it is one of the wealthiest, most advanced societies that sends rockets to the moon and has an advanced nuclear arsenal. So while poverty is a reality, it isn't the only reality in India. People can come out of poverty. It isn't just a possibility, it's a must. So the question is, how? What can be done about the situation for Indian Muslims? I don't have all the answers, but I have seen with my own eyes what Indian Muslim Relief and Charity is doing on the ground. From hospitals to orphanages, primary schools to universities, IMRC serves virtually every aspect of Indian society. The sick, the poor, the weak, IMRC serves them all. In 2022 alone, IMRC served over 10,000 students, 6,000 of which were children, and 1,300 were orphans. Millions of people were fed, and thousands of survivors of natural disasters received much-needed aid. Over 130,000 people received medical attention in the form of surgeries, dialysis, and more. Thousands of scholarships meant that the poorest of students could study subjects like IT, go to college, and get jobs in sectors of the economy like media and journalism. It's merely a drop in the bucket, but the impact is undeniable. IMRC is transforming Indian lives, and your support makes that possible. Find out more about how you can support IMRC and their mission to transform India by visiting their website.